First of all, thank you to Cavalier Galleries. Uh, they've been a tremendous help uh, to me over the last two and a half years. Uh, Joellen, Charlotte, Kelly, everyone's just really, really helped me out uh, when I really had no idea what I was doing. Um, and uh, especially to Ron, um, who really had a lot of faith in my work and really trusted me. Uh, and uh, I think the first contact we had was I sent him some email, an email with some of my paintings. Um, and he got right back to me and I sat in the Dunkin' Donuts and he sort of talked me through how it was going to work and he, he came by my studio and uh, he's really talked me through a lot of tough spots and so I really thank you for that. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Um, anyway, uh, I, I'm a little bit unprepared, I'll go ahead and admit that. My wife back there and I just had a baby two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And he's you. And he's back there somewhere. So, uh, his name's Benjamin. Um, so I feel a little bit preoccupied with that, but uh, I'll try to uh, focus here. And I'm very good at talking about myself, so I should be able to make, make it through. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my background, my personal history with art, um, if you're interested. Um, if not, walk out at any point. Um, but as, for as long as I can remember, um, I've been an artist, or at the very least, I've drawn. Um, I think uh, my mom has saved drawings from when I was two, three years old. Um, and she actually... Um, endowed me with a bit of uh, overconfidence at an early age. I think I had a little bit too much of an artistic swagger when I was in elementary school. And uh, to be honest, when I look back on some of those drawings, they really, they're really not that good. Um, they're pretty incomprehensible like any other young kids. Um, but I bought into the uh, hype that my mom uh, sort of built up in my head, and uh, uh, that art actually served me well um, in elementary school on numerous occasions, and I'll, I'll share one of those with you. Uh, once, when I think I was eight or nine years old, we were moving to a new school, and I was really, really nervous about meeting all these new kids. And so, for weeks leading up to the move, um, I would draw myself in an outfit, uh, and I even drew myself in this outfit, uh, meeting all the kids. And the outfit, incidentally, was a red Chicago Bulls t-shirt and black sweatpants, <laughs> oddly enough. And uh, in the drawings, all the kids were so happy to meet me, and they loved this little outfit. And uh, anyway, it was a bit of fantasy work, because when I got there, this didn't play out as I uh, intended. Um, my first day, I go there, and the teacher lines all the kids up on the sidewalk, and he puts me in front of them and says, this is your new classmate, Scott Waddell. And there was no reaction. Nobody said anything about the outfit. Nobody seemed happy about the outfit. And in fact, one kid off to my right, I have no idea who it was to this day, said, I think the new kid has fleas. <laughs> which was a little devastating. And uh, it put me in a position where I had to sort of redeem myself, and I used art as a way to redeem myself. Uh, I think a week later, we were in class, and we got some drawing assignment, and uh, I, I figured I'd pull out the big guns. I had a really impressive drawing, and all these kids would suddenly love me, and so I did this, you know, really elaborate, multi-figure Crayola affair. And uh, this kid next to me, Brad Harris, I remember his name, and uh, he was sitting next to me because of the alphabet order, because uh, I have fleas, and who wants it next to me? Um, and he looks over, and he sees what I'm drawing, and he says, my god, this kid can draw. This kid can draw. He announces it to the group. And uh, so from that point forward, I began to purchase friendships with these drawings. I was doing Bart Simpson for this cool kid, and Mario for this kid, and on it went. Uh, so anyway, I, I got a little bit more of a reputation as an artist, and uh, that took me on into middle school, high school. And then my interest became a little bit more varied. Um, I actually. Uh, well, I did continue to draw and paint throughout my uh, life, and it was uh, one of my main passions. Um, the bulk of my creative interest went into other art forms, um, more narrative art forms. Uh, I began to act and really liked uh, writing, um, and I got into uh, different plays. And that eventually led me into uh, film, um, which is, of course, one of the most uh, significant uh, narrative art forms we have today. And some people actually say that uh, uh, the entire um, uh, narrative of the Renaissance in the 19th century sort of found its graveyard in cinema. I don't really agree because obviously I do these paintings, um, but it is interesting that I spent some time doing narrative painting. Uh, sorry, narrative filmmaking. Anyway, uh, I made these movies. I made all kinds of short movies. I was making really important movies at 16 about the Holocaust and Vietnam, and uh, that actually led me into film school at Florida State University. Um, but all the while, um, I, I still kept drawing and painting in my free time. I, didn't, I, I knew I didn't want to be an artist, um, but it was just something I compulsively did. I just couldn't stop myself from doing it. Um, and, and everything was confusing, as I think it is for a lot of 18, 19, 20-year-olds. Um, I had no real tradition I was a part of. Everything was very disparate. 
Um, I, you know, I, when I looked at the art world, um, you know, there was surrealism here, there was postmodernism here, avant-gardeism. I had nothing really to grab onto, nothing I really identified with. What I identified with throughout my whole life was, you know, I really liked the classics. I loved Greek history, I loved Roman history, um, and then I, I loved the Renaissance up through the 19th century. And uh, I, but I just didn't really feel like I could participate in it. There was no uh, that sort of contemporary realm where I could go and paint like those people. Um, but more and more when I was at bookstores, uh, I would start walking past American Cinematographer and other film-related magazines, and I would go towards American artists or international artists. Uh, and on one occasion, um, I picked up an American artist, I think it was, and I opened it up and there was these beautiful paintings. They were exactly sort of what I always desired uh, to paint and the type of paintings I always looked at. But there were paintings being painted now. Uh, and it, you know, it was just a very sort of pivotal mo moment for me. Um, and I had no idea who the artist was, but coincidentally, later in that week, um, I became aware of a portrait artist living in Tallahassee um, uh, from another student at FSU. And so I looked the artist up in the phone book, I called him up, and uh, he invited me over to the studio, and it turned out to be something pretty important. It was uh, Ed Jonas, he's the vice chairman of the Portrait Society of America. And uh, he was very, very nice, and he actually introduced me to a gentleman named Douglas Flint, who actually, I think, has had some paintings here. And Doug was one of the biggest and remains to be one of the biggest influences on me. Uh, he had just completed his studies at Water Street Atelier with Jacob Collins. And uh, he uh, began to introduce me to all the concepts that I would eventually employ. And before I left at Jonas that day, he actually gave me a little flyer or a catalog um, from a show that was going on somewhere in New York at the time. And uh, in the catalog, there were some paintings. And they were the same paintings from that American artist uh, article I'd seen the week before. And it was Jacob Collins. Uh, and so, uh, from that point forward, I, I became very motivated and I had some kind of a direction. I saw that people now, today, were paying paintings um, that I could appreciate, and it was a tradition I wanted to be a part of. Uh, and I couldn't even sleep that night. I just kept thinking about, I, I couldn't even uh, stop thinking about um, the prospect of being a painter. And just like that, I switched from film um, back to uh, painting. And, uh, and uh, so from, uh, I'm sorry, I got a uh, so after that, uh, I went to um, the Florence Academy of Art and I had a lovely time there. Florence was very inspirational. I saw great art. Um, the school had a, a lot of great ideas. Um, but I still wanted to go and study with Jacob, the person that really um, drew me into this uh, field to begin with. And so I came back to the States. I went down to Florida to raise some money, shared a studio with my friend Doug, um, who continued to help me. And then I went up to New York for about a year and a half and uh, studied with Jacob. And I met some of these uh, guys here, Brandon and Josh, and my friends. Um, and uh, it was a wonderful experience. I, I was there at a very special time because Jake was finishing several uh, large figure paintings. Um, and so I had the privilege of seeing him start and finish um, many, many paintings. And I, I uh, carry that experience with me still to this day. And it, it definitely influences my work. Uh, then after that, after I got done studying, my wife, um, who is an animal trainer and worked for the Bronx Zoo, got a job up in Mystic, uh, Connecticut at the uh, Mystic Aquarium. Wow. And uh, that is actually, that resulted in a lot of the paintings, the themes behind a lot of my paintings you see here tonight. Um, because in Mystics, there's the Mystic Seaport, which I was not aware of until I moved there. But uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a recreated 1876 whaling village, and it has um, an authentic uh, whaling vessel, the Charles Morgan. And so going to the Mystic Seaport and boarding this vessel and seeing this town and, and everything becoming very tangible, I could pick it up, uh, interact with it, harpoons and, and so forth, um, became very inspiring. I mean, and it was just uh, almost automatic um, from that day forward that I was going to go home and do this series. I mean, I feel like I'm interested in a lot of things. I mean, I could have very easily gone and painted, you know, uh, a bunch of uh, Wessex themed paintings if I had moved to England. But I happened to move to Mystic, Connecticut, and the Seaport was there, and I, images just started flooding into my mind. Um, so, um, that being said, I'll talk a little bit about some of the paintings here. Um, I have this binder, which I'm going to set somewhere, and feel free to thumb through it. It's basically just um, a lot of the preliminary sketches and ideas that I do um, in advance of some of the paintings. And I'll actually start with this guy here, because it's, uh, I think, the earliest of the entire group. I can't exactly remember when I painted it, but the title's Leviathan. Um, I think that I named it Leviathan because uh, Herman Melville refers to the whale as Leviathan. Um, it also, I like giving it somewhat of a biblical context from the Hebrew Bible. I think uh, Leviathan is mentioned. Of course, it's in reference to a sea serpent and is somewhat synonymous for the devil, but, and it's also in some Psalms, but I think 
Uh, from the 19th century onward, I think that it became synonymous with widow. And so uh, I think uh, this was the earliest sketch I did for this painting here. And of course, it was before I ever hired a model or anything like that. It was just me trying to capture a basic mood. Sorry. <laughs> um, and it was, I really wanted the shot of looking down on the guy. I wanted it foreshortened, something that would make him seem small. 